So there are some quick fundamentals that we need to know before we go into the next like upper C game. For shooters specifically, we want to make sure that we're running two sim class motors for our flywheel. Uh, we want to make sure that they are powering our flywheel in some way, shape, or form. And we're running a solid roller fly, uh, wheel in order to eject our game pieces. So you can use something like the solid roller wheels from West Coast products. You can use Colson's. You can use stealth wheels, but don't use something squishy like compliant wheels. Because once you run them at fast speeds, they will expand. If you need additional inertia, say you're shooting multiple game pieces at multiple game pieces because it's like 2020. I guess you could do it in 2022, but in 2020 it's popular. You would want to have a brass flywheel like this one from Swerve Drive Specialties in order to increase the moment of inertia of your flywheel, and that makes your shot a lot more consistent. Additionally, if you for shooter games that in, involve a ball, you want to make sure you're running back rollers because the back rollers will decrease the amount of backspin and increase the amount of consistency in your shot. You typically want to run a belt run up to your back rollers so that they are hooked directly to your main flywheel. And then a gear, gear swap to your flywheel back rollers. Then you can just belt these together as is. Besides that, you want to make sure you, you typically want to have some form of vision attached to your shooter and you can usually have this fit. In terms of belting, you want to make sure that you can, you typically want to run a motor that is belted to your flywheel. So for a more basic example, like 1678's alpha, you can see how we're just running like a falcon or you can use a kraken nowadays to some to the shaft which then powers our flywheel but we aren't directly powering it like in the vortex the issue with the vortex here is the fact that it's very difficult to swap the motor if you need to swap the motor so i would not recommend running this specific implementation although the rest of the shooter is pretty clean you typically want to run standoffs for your backing so you can use cot standoffs from west coast products as well and use this as the backing in order to create consistent compression for your shot and then you can just run a motor powering whatever your like indexer wheel and that's kind of it for the basics i guess if you want to look at our master sketch you can see quickly go here actually the master sketch isn't in this document so we'll have to go back uh let's go back to master sketch we go to our layout sketch real quick. And actually we can talk about our Crayon CAD too. So here's how a Crayon CAD might look for a shooter. You can see the back rollers as well, the game piece going through. And if we go to our master sketch and we'll wait for this to load, the master sketch will also include all of the compression elements in the game piece path, which is going to be important. So you can see it here. So game piece, we have our up and down position for our intake. This goes through. The game piece then wraps around and there's consistent compression since it's tangent with the circle. It then becomes tangent with the shooter circle and then an the angle is defined, which this is 40 inches. Prototype as necessary, have your back, you can also have your backspin rollers right here. And that's kind of it for shooters.